Ladies and gentlemen, thank you once again for tuning in to another episode of the Generation of Wrestling Podcast. As always, is yours truly, the 29-year-old piece of gold, the franchise. And with me, as always, I have Impact Knockouts World Champion, Jordan Grace. Jordan, how are you doing? I'm good. Thank you for having me. We thank just you. talked a couple weeks ago, right? We did. We did. Okay. Literally just two weeks ago, right before uh, Against All Lives. Yes. Okay. I remember. And then we will have uh, my co-host, King Two called on in a minute. But until then, Jordan. So last time we talked, right, uh, we're going to talk about Bound for Glory uh, coming up in October. We're going to talk about that knockout title. Same we're also going to talk about uh, the Derby City Rumble, which is coming up. But I want to talk to you because when we last talked, you have four pooches. Now you got a new addition to the family for those who Dang. missed it. How yeah. did this happen? How do every time we talk, you get more and more puppies? <laughs> I, I don't know. I'm tired of it personally. Uh, but just something, something within me can't turn a dog away, apparently. But actually, this dog really, he just, he fell into our laps. He came onto our, our front doorstep quite literally. Uh, we ordered Uber Eats, and now they just kind of leave the bag outside the door, obviously. Uh-huh. And when we opened the door up, this dude was trying to rip open the bag, and he was he was terrified at first. He ran away and was, like, not interested, like, just trying to get away. But uh, we looked at him, and he's super, like, he didn't look like any of these dogs. He was super scrawny and skinny, uh-huh. and he looked messed up. And so I just opened the bag of Uber Eats and started to try to get him to come inside with the food. And we got him inside and were able to, you know, give him a flea bath and all that stuff, take him to the vet. We tried to get a, him scanned for the chip. He didn't have a chip. Uh-huh. I've, been posting in, I've been posting in groups for two weeks trying to, to find him an owner, but we haven't found anybody yet. And I think he might just be staying with us. So do we have a name for him officially or? So we were calling him Ubi for uh-huh. a long time after Uber Eats. Uh, but we have a, a bee, we have a bee tradition in our family. We have two cats and four dogs with a bee name, and so we have to we had to stick with the tradition. So we're calling him Booby now. <laughs> I got it. I like it. I like it. Well, Jordan, you just came off of a title win over Tasha Steels at Against All Odds, and then of course last night we seen the HBIC Me AM going against Main Event D. So that's going to be your next challenge. You're at Emergence. How has the last few weeks been for you? I mean, you're finally getting that title rank that you wanted. You're getting to defend it in front of the crowd like you talked about. What's it been like for you the last couple of weeks or so? Man, it's been a whirlwind, to be completely honest with you. I've been doing media the past two times. So the past four weeks straight, you know, right off Queen of the Mountain, came to do media, then on to the next pay-per-view, the Impact Plus pay-per-view, then media again, and we're back to another pay-per-view next weekend. So... It's really been a whirlwind. Um, I'm super happy that I got to defend the title for the first time in my uh, my pseudo hometown of Atlanta, Georgia. That was awesome. I love wrestling at Center Stage. It's probably my my favorite place in the in the U.S. to wrestle. So it was just it was awesome. It was everything that I had dreamed it could be. Okay, now before we get to further promoted things, I want to talk to you because a lot has happened since we last talked. Uh, not going to get into any specifics, but of course, you know. Uh, You've definitely been trending um, amongst other things. And I want to talk to you because the one thing I've noticed about you, especially since we've been following you, you've always seen to be somebody who speaks their mind, right? Uh, regardless. And you've always for seen better or for worse. For sure. Exactly. Exactly. You've always seen to stay true to yourself. How important is that for you, for somebody in the public eye, no matter what other people may say or other people may think? How important is it for you to have your opinions and stick by them, regardless of what the masses may think? Well, Oh, my media guy is right here, Ross. <laughs> He's checking in on us. Um, I think for me, it's it's really important because the first you know few years of my career, I was very quiet and I didn't say a lot and I just kind of didn't want to step on anybody's toes and I just got tired of that after a while. Especially when you sit, you sit and you you get to listen to the old heads and all the yeah. stuff they they talk about and yeah, it's it's pretty messed up a lot of the times and so I just don't feel like. I need to be quiet anymore. I feel like I have a platform where I can, you know, promote positivity and promote things that I think are right and wrong. And that's what I do. Speaking of positivity, recently, uh, fellow Impact star Giselle Shaw, she came out, uh, came out recently to a lot of support from Impact Wrestling. As a fellow wrestler, how does that make you feel to see, you know, the visibility and the love and support that Impact has continued to give you uh, men and women over the last few years, especially? I'm really proud of her. I'm super glad that she finally decided to to do this publicly. And uh, I know she had a her pride tour that she went on. And I, I know she had a blast on that. I know that made her feel super, super loved and happy. 
And I'm, I'm, I'm just very proud of her. I'm happy that she finally got the opportunity to be true to herself. Absolutely, absolutely. Okay, now we got the Derby City Rumble coming up uh, at Old Forces Paris Town Hall in Louisville, Kentucky, the 15th and the 16th. How excited are you for this event? I know we got emergence coming up as well, but the Derby City Rumble, for those who don't know what that is, talk to them and explain to the people, what is this event all about? Man, I'm, I'm going to be completely honest with you. I've never heard the, the name Der Derby City Rumble. Maybe I've just been like missing out the past few years. I don't know if we've called it that for a while or not. Okay, uh -huh. Russ says no. Russ says no, so I'm not misremembering. So I guess we just came up with that name. But I actually didn't know that Louisville was called the Derby City. So uh -huh. that, <laughs> that was new to me. But these will be two uh, TV tapings, and I think it's going to be super fun for fans. And hopefully they bring all their kids out because that's going to be – Kids love wrestling. Like I, right. I feel like I don't see kids enough at wrestling, and parents just need to bring out their kids because no one gets more invested in professional wrestling than children, right? <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Speaking of, I believe I want to say if I'm not misremembering, I believe it was Josh Alexander's son. You had put up a tweet uh, of his son backstage, and I believe it was Scott Demora. Uh, how cool is it for you to be able to see a guy like Josh? working his ass off, coming to the ring, then having his family and seeing this kid kind of, you know, be with all these idols and his fans. I know you and Josh's son take a lot of pics together and you show a lot of love. How cool is that family environment? He is the absolute cutest kid. Like, he is the most adorable. Um, I hope if I ever have kids one day that they love wrestling that much because, like, that kid loves wrestling. I'm, I'm constantly getting sent uh, videos and photos by Jen, which is, Josh Alexander's wife of him doing different things. Uh, he, she sent me a video. I saw a video earlier of him actually putting on an Iron Man mask and a uh -huh. Santa Claus hat and doing <laughs> Eric Young's entire entrance, like really? <laughs> the pulling off the the hood and the mask. And I was like, this kid, he pays so much attention to detail, and I just can hope that I have that one day. Speaking of, okay, so you talk about Eric Young, and he's got his whole thing going with Violent by Design, VBD. Right now, I know we talked about it last time, Impact and the pay-per-views, but overall, just quality TV shows week after week after week after week. You guys are killing it. I want to talk to you about Mia Yim. I want to talk to you about Deanna Perrazzo. I want to talk to you. you got James Storm back for a little while now. I don't know how long that's going to last, but how is it? Because I know we talked about the, the pushing of the newer talent, but you're starting to see some of the older vets getting mixed in there, but nobody really stepping on each other's toes. How is it coexisting with such a, a high pot of talent right now? Man, it's it's really crazy, to be honest with you. Like, you have you have people from everywhere. It seems yeah. like nowadays, it seems like everybody's kind of an ex-WWE superstar, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's what it seems like. So we have people from literally, like, they've been wrestling for, some are wrestling for 30 years, 40 years, some wrestling for like a couple, you know, of years. And it's just crazy to see kind of a melting pot of all those people. And to be completely honest with you, yes, it's an, it's an impact, but across wrestling as a whole altogether now, yeah. it's just insane to see all these wrestlers being able to work together and coexist for really the better professional wrestling. Because we were kind of in a time period where wrestling was almost in a, in a lull. We came off, you know, the Attitude Era, everybody was right. like hot on wrestling. And then it kind of just like started to die down a little bit. But I feel like we're trending upwards again. And we're working together as wrestlers to get fans back into wrestling. Okay. So speaking of like the older talent or the more experienced veteran talent, having them come back, does it kind of increase the competitive edge between the two? Or is it more of just like a mentoring, like a big brother, big sister to the, to the younger talent upcoming in the locker room? I cannot speak to anybody else. So I'll, I'll say that first. Uh, okay. But for me <laughs> personally, I don't ever feel like I need to compete with anyone besides myself. Um, right. I feel like really if it's meant to be, it's going to be. And if I work hard enough, it's going to happen. And I did that for the past two years. And my thought on that was right. I got back to the inside knockouts title. Um, and when, when another girl comes into the locker room, I never feel like I need to compete with her. Or, you know, I don't feel like she's going to take my spot. I feel like we should be uplifting each other especially in the women's division because we were yes. we were something for for so long that was not respected and it was just it was something different than it is now and yeah. i feel like it's more important than ever to have that kinship with other wrestlers 
Speaking of main eventing, like I said, we just had Deanna Perrazzo and, of course, Mia Yim put on the bar and burner. Definitely, as you said, could have main evented any pay-per-view. Do you think moving forward, seeing matches like this and the likes of yourself, do we think we can get more and more and more of this being a common thing and not like, oh, the women main evented? Yeah, I definitely think so because the women – hi, how's it going? What's happening, Mama? How are you? The women in Impact can definitely go. And I think the more that we build to these matches, the more we can have these main events because we can definitely do it. Um, they gave the women time too, which is extremely important, obviously, especially in the main event. And these, those two women, Deanna and Mia, they killed it. That's, that's the best Impact Knockouts match I've seen in a very long time. And they, they stayed true to what Impact Knockouts are. I love it. So cool. What's up, brother? How are you? I'm sorry for the lateness. Uh, I was getting off of the morning gig. I'm, I'm here. Uh, Miss Grace, I appreciate you. How are you? I'm good. How are you doing? Uh, doing good. Now it's Friday and I'm off work. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Tuco. So, uh, you know, Jordan and I, we were just kind of catching up. We were talking about, you know, the Impact World uh, Women's uh, Championship title scene. Uh, talked about the Derby City Rumble event, which is coming up July 15th and the 16th. Uh, so, you know, we haven't got too, too deep into anything. So go ahead, man. Take it away. Uh, j just... What, what's what's been up with you, Jordan? Like, you know, we talked to you a couple of weeks ago since you won, and you know, there's been a lot of shakeup. You, I know you said you you got a lot of new Impact women that, or you know, some of those bets that are there, but a lot of new faces that you're interested in fighting. You got a Mia Yim, uh, one of those new faces. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know if he asked you that, but what are your thoughts on wanting to face her? Oh man, so this is actually a story that uh, I've told a couple times now, but not many people know it. Me and Mia actually wrestled for the first time about seven years ago, and she okay. was the very first person to actually take my, my finishing move, which was, mm. uh, you know, the, the, the flip driver, the pump handle flip driver. Right. Right. And it was literally, I had gotten, I'd come back from watching uh, old Matt Seidel Ring of Honor, and mm. he used that as his finisher for a while. And I was like, man, that's such a cool move. I want to do that move. And so Mia was the first person to take that. And it wasn't even the finish of the match. It was uh, like just something that I wanted to try. It was a cool move I wanted to do. And she was the first person to take it. And I told her that. I told her that, uh, like, when she first got back, I was like, hey, you know you know what? And I told her the story. And she was like, oh, man, that's, that's crazy. Like, and I also told her that I had never practiced it before, uh, before I did it on her. And she was like, well, thank God. <laughs> thank God it's funny. It was it's funny. Well, it's a good thing everything about, went smooth. It's funny. I was just about to ask you, has there ever been a time in a match where you're going up against somebody, you guys are kind of, you know, trying to formulate, okay, this, 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 and somebody's like, hey, I got an idea for this move, but I've never done it. Uh, does that happen more often than we think? Oh, definitely. Because when you're at training, uh, there's a lot of people that just don't want to take the bump, right? Like, they don't, if it's like a complicated move or like a move that looks crazy, there's a lot of people that are just like, no, oh, I don't want to take that. Maybe we just right. do it at the time. So you kind of get the logistics down. So obviously, like, you figure out where to hold the person. You kind of uh, – what's the word? I guess you, you, you would go over it without actually doing the bump. So right. a lot of the times when you, when you first, like, see a move happen, especially, like, one of those big moves, we're just doing, we're just doing it for the first time, like, Oof. without practicing it. <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, my God. Too cold. Take it away, brother. Uh, so, okay, so you got me and Yim. You, of course, we got Chelsea going up against uh, Mickey James next week. I just, what, what, what is the feel for the women now that, you know, again, you guys are, you're, you're getting the bigger spotlight. You're getting the, like, you, I think you mentioned earlier, longer matches and all this stuff. What is it, what is the feel just for the women overall in the locker room right now? Oh, man, we're really keeping our noses down and grinding hard because, uh, there is a lot of competition in the wrestling world, and there's a lot of – you've seen women's matches in WWE and AEW. Yeah. Everybody's killing it everywhere, and we really want to be known as the best roster, and I think that we need to put our best foot forward nonstop, whether it's on TV, an Impact Plus special, a pay-per-view special. We want – Impact Wrestling, we, we can't afford to miss, if that yeah. makes sense. Like, right. Because if fans are tuning in for the first time, we don't want to put on a bad pay-per-view. We don't want to have like a bad TV episode. So we want to hook fans right away because these big promotions have obviously way more money than us that go into marketing and advertising, and, and we don't really have that. So if we can get people hooked off and just start wrestling, I think we'll be, we'll be good. Well, putting together the, the people that you have, I mean, like I said, you had, you had Peraza and Yim, you got Chelsea and Mickey coming up, you got yourself, you have others. I, so I don't think you guys 
are are that far behind because any true wrestling fan knows that Impact has the better women's division. I it's just you guys, you make us watch you. It, it's not that we're seeing pretty faces or anything like that. We're watching women go out there and be more badass than most men. And I've always appreciated that about the Impact, especially w- with women like yourself. Uh, so I, I I feel you guys do have that, but I understand what you're saying as far as the, you know, the the the, the big picture as far as the bigger companies having that promotion and. But I, I always feel like Impact has always been that one thing. It's always been the X Division, and it's always been the Women's Division. Yes, I, I definitely agree with you. X Division and the Women's Division are two things that definitely stand out the most at Impact. Right. Okay, so you recently posted on your Patreon, you uploaded your, your diet plan, and your workout regimen. But I got a different question for you. When you're yeah. ready to get in that killer zone in the gym, what or who are you listening to? What's your go to? What's your go to theme music when you're in the gym trying to get a real good pump in? To be completely honest with you, I have like two different mood playlists, I guess. So I have like a a rap one and then I have like a a more kind of like rock one. Uh-huh. And I really uh I don't know if I, I'm really bad at remembering artists and specific song names, but I do listen to a lot of like um Drake and Lil Wayne and people like that just because I like the beat of the music. Um there's a song called Remember My Name. Do you know what that is? I feel like it's yep. a very popular song. Yeah, it is. Yeah. <laughs> I forget. Uh-huh. Who's it by? Fort Minor? Oh, my God. I, I want to I say yes, but I, I, okay. I, I feel like it's, it, it's a few of them. I feel yeah. like <laughs> everybody who has heard that song knows that song, and I listen right. to that to get pumped up mostly. <laughs> All right. What's your, what's your, when you go to the gym, what's your go-to workout? If there's one thing that you could do, you only got about 30 minutes to get it in, what's your go-to workout? Shoulders all day, <laughs> every day. Like, that is my favorite thing to work Got to lift those gotta, arms, baby. Got to gotta lift those arms. <laughs> there's nothing more important to me than, like, having, like, big, wide shoulders. <laughs> Well, you've definitely, definitely, definitely gotten it together. Definitely you know, that. you've always been a little muscular when you first came in, but now you really see, like, you shred it up. So, trust me, nobody's walking up on Jordan Grace on the sidewalk, I can promise. Yeah, I want no, I want to no, look no, like, no. I, don't, I really don't want people to talk to me when I walk down the street, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> definitely don't want nobody saying the wrong thing to you, so that's yes, for sure. exactly. I hear there's a new addition to the family. I yep. There what do you? So, so what was? I, I, I gotta know. So what? What, what is the name? We, 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 you beat me to it. I didn't. I didn't. I, I missed it. So I missed it. So what's the new dog's name? So, oh my god! Why did I think you were talking about Impact? I thought you were talking about no, no, no. Kelly. No, 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 uh, uh, no, no. I, I, I'm talking about. I was gonna get to there, but I wanted to talk. You know, you know me. I'm a dog guy. I, I, we, you know, we love our dogs. So I, I wanted to bring that up. Yes, there is a, a new addition to the family. His name is Booby. Uh, mm-hmm. He was originally named Ubi after Uber Eats because that's what that's where we originally found him. We opened the front door and he was trying to rip open our bag of Uber Eats. It was just, I guess, a stray <laughs> dog or a dog that had been abandoned. And we ended up, uh, we have a B trend. So we have two cats, Billy, Buddy, and then we have the dogs, Barry, Bernice, Blue, Bert, and now we have Booby. Booby, uh, that's that's a hell of a name. Now to the <laughs> other new addition. I like that name though. I, I like the, I, I like the fact that yeah, he was trying to steal our Uber Eats. Uh, what you know what? Your name is Uber. That is that is just going to be your name from now on. <laughs> but the other new addition to the company. What are your thoughts on that? And what the impact could be for the company? You know, I feel like we've been waiting forever. I feel like mm. she. I don't know if she had what the logistics were with her signing, but I feel like it's been. Uh, a long time coming and she's finally mm-hmm. here, right? Um, right? I know there was a there was announcements, I don't even know how long ago, over a year ago that she had signed with the company and I think there was some problems with, you know, pandemic stuff, getting in and out of the country. Right. But I think she's finally here to stay and I'm super excited she is. Oh, awesome. Go ahead, Fred. All right, well, Jordan, before we wrap it up with some last minute promotion, uh, Tuco, I'm going to go ahead because I know I took the first half of it, man. I want to let you get another one in really quick before we do some last minute wrap up. I, man, I, 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 I didn't have much. I just, you know, there's a few things I wanted to touch on base with. I'm sure to, I'll you know, be back, about. Oh, yeah, you know oh. we're going to be back and we're going to want to talk to you. So, no, no <laughs> definitely. But, uh, no, I, I'm good, man. I, I got my few questions in. Uh, I got the new, new, new uh, dog's name, so I'm good there. But, uh, no, I, I just – I enjoy seeing what I'm seeing from the impact. I, I just want to give flowers because, again, like you said, you guys are really putting your nose into the ground and really making that name for that impact division, women's division, that was always respected. Uh, of course, you know, d- depending on the, what was going on with the company, but there was always that one thing that people always respected. And I, I am just a fan 
of just seeing that because I've always been a big fan of it. I, that's how I got to learn some of the newer women that were coming into the business and just seeing them like, man, this isn't just a pretty face. This this girl can break somebody's jaw. OK, I, I, I like I like her. I want to see more of her. So I just want to give flowers to you guys and just continue to do your great work. And I, 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 and, and I don't plan to see you lose that championship no time soon. Thank you so much. <laughs> All right, and with that being said, uh, so again, again, July 15th and the 16th, Louisville, Kentucky at Old Forces Paris Town Hall. We have the Derby City Rumble. Also, we got the Emergence Pay-Per-View coming up. And then mm. shortly after that, we will be on the road to Bound for Glory. Ladies and gentlemen, Ooh. we got to be respectful of this young lady's time. She's busy. As always, it's an honor and a privilege. Gotta I'm catch a flight. Yo, piece of gold. She, he's hey, King 2 Go. She's the Impact World Champion, and we'll see you guys soon. Thank you once again, Jordan. See you, See you guys later. later. All right now.